<sighs> See these people? They are how I feel about this game. The way they look right now. Look at look at them. They're they're showing how I feel about this game. These people are showing how the community feels about this game. This audience is the community right now and how we feel about this game. <sighs> so this game was announced the other day and it was not well received by many of us. And by us, I mean the people who actually care. So, let me just go into all these topics about why uh, about, uh, why I'm so disappointed in this game, why so many of us are. So, I'll start off with the graphics, I'll go into the gameplay, so that's the part that matters most, and then the music. Actually, you know what, the music probably matters the most, but you know what, that's the order of the the topics we're going to go over, because holy moly, this is, this game is something else, I'll tell you what. So, the graphics. Right now, this, this game just, it just looks like there wasn't very much effort put into it. It looks like one of those knockoff games you'd find for free to download to install on your PC, on your mobile, uh, phone, tablet, whatever. It just looks cheap. It just doesn't look like there's been much effort put into this. So, one example of this, just just, just look at it, really. Wrong video. Uh, the, the logo, it's not even the same thing. They took away the logo that we're used to seeing and just made it plain. They could have added this live pic below the logo we're used to seeing, but... Uh, Man, okay. So, it's it just doesn't look the same. It looks like a knockoff. It, it just looks cheap. So then what's next? These first-person music videos, where you'll see the crowd, where you'll see the band around you. It, I, I can see the idea. I can see why they would use it. It's to make it more realistic, to add immersion. But... It's when when you get down to what this does, it's really just it bad. You know why? It's it's similar to those old Sega CD games. Like um some some other people would point out that one basketball game where you uh you control this dude in first person. You're trying to like shoot hoops around this other dude, whatnot, whatever. You get the point. It's first person live action in a video game. It's garbage, trash. So what else does this do? It cuts out the everything about the series we've known to like graphically. It cuts out characters, custom characters, custom instruments, the really sick stages we used to see from GH1 all the way up through, dude, all the way up until the last game that just came out. And just, there's nothing really even nice to look at. There's no... There's no fun things to customize. You're taking away a lot of the game visually. You're just... I can understand making it more simple, but you're taking away so much. There's just... You're, you're pretty much making it a huge lack of visuals here. And another thing that really bugs me about it is that it really seems like by going down this route, you're pretty much... Uh, how do I say it? They're allowing this game to be developed with a low budget. Like, how much does the art team have to actually work on? They just have to work on the UI, the uh, highway here with the notes. What else do they have to work on? The menus? That's really it. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much not pouring very much uh, resources into the art style. Nothing. Just gone. All in favor of real action. Uh, I, I just don't like it. You're taking away a lot of things just to make things real and immersive. I just don't like it. Maybe you might, but I don't. It's just not the same anymore. So what, what, what else does this mean when it comes to the graphics? It means that the game is pretty much having its soul, its style, its personality that we used to get from the games from GH1 all the way up until Warriors of Rock. Guitar Hero has always been known to have like this 
this silly, this over-the-top personality, this style about it. It really didn't take itself seriously, and that's what made it fun. But by going down this route, you're taking all of that away just to make it more realistic. And that's just not my thing. I think a lot of us didn't mind how Guitar Hero was in that regard. And that's actually where Rock Band came in and kind of made itself a little more serious, but at the same time very calm. It wasn't it wasn't out there like Guitar Hero was trying to be, but it was trying to be its own thing too. This is just trying to be the real life with a not even realistic instrument controller. So it's... Uh, I, I just don't understand why they're going down this route. Uh, whatever. There's probably more stuff I'm going to cover regarding graphics that'll just happen to come up, but that's it for now. So, gameplay. First thing is uh, first thing we go into is the, the UI, the user interface. So, the lack of a rock meter is the first thing I have here. And you think with the way they're going about this is that um, they use the crowd as your rock meter. They get more disappointed at, at you for playing bad, clearly as we can see here. But when you get to a higher level and they're really throwing hard shit at you, how close do you know, how, how do you know how close you are to failing? You kind of don't. You just see the screen flashing red and they're booing you and then you're probably going to fail. But what if you're really that close to failing but you can actually save yourself? You don't know how close to the red you are. I just, I just don't like it. Maybe I'm just too used to the arcadey feel, arcadey look of the originals, but it's just not there. And other things that show the UI is, uh, let's see, the game here. The site. You scroll down to the GHTV section and you get more examples of the UI. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. So, the lack of a rock meter where you have to use the crowd as your rock meter. I just don't like it. So, okay. The note streak position is something else I really, just really don't like. In this, I'm assuming this is like the casual party mode. So they're probably going to make the, everything very simplistic and very minimal. But right here, uh, okay, I don't see why. I feel like they could have put it down here, done something similar to Rock Band with their um, power. I don't know if they call it star power, but you get the idea. Star power multiplier, how they have it right here. You think they would put the note streak down here too, but ugh, whatever. And then on these screenshots, you can see they have it up here on the top. I, it's a placement of all this crap just feels strange. I don't, I don't really understand the design choice for it, but whatever. So multiplier. When you hit notes, you gain progress towards your next. Multiplier. Hit 10 notes times 2. 10 more notes times 3. So on until times 4. Where is that? I'm not going to use this mode as an example because it's probably meant to take away everything just so you can jump in and play. But this, I don't see it. There's stars. There's your score. There's your note streak. This is, I'm assuming, the competitive thing where you compare against other people. But where's the multiplier? I really hope they'll add that back in because I really don't understand why it's not there. Okay. Star progress bar. So, in Guitar Hero... I know Warriors of Rock, I'm not sure about any before them, but you would be able to see just how close you are to getting the next star. There'd be like a bar, for example, under the, underneath these stars. It would show you how close you are to the next one right here you see the stars you've earned on the way but what if you're close to that four or five star or what if you're not close to it you, you you can't tell what if I just got a four star but didn't know if I was close to the five star maybe my score was trash and I couldn't get five star maybe I almost got five star but hey I can't tell so I really hope they add that back in man 
So now, let's see. Next thing is uh, the song length meter. It wasn't really important, but it's just something I noticed that's missing. It was this thing over here. It was like a gray bar or something like that, gray, blue. It'll just show you how the song's length, the progress. Sometimes you want to know just how long this goddamn song is. I sight read a song. I see it's still going and I want it to end. And I just want to see how far it is. It's not there. Whatever. Not a huge deal. Okay. So now we're getting to more important things here. Difficulty names. Okay. So it's not that important. But I still think, I still think it's stupid. Rookie. Regular. Advanced. And veteran. Are you kidding me? Rookie. Regular. Advanced. And veteran. So. How often are any of these words besides advanced used to describe a guitar player? I can sometimes understand veteran and maybe rookie, but those are very, very rarely used to describe a guitar player. You would think like beginner or novice into like, this shit, I don't know, intermediate, into advanced, into what we know as expert or Someone who's really freaking good, okay? I just I just don't like these these difficulty names. They're strange. There was nothing wrong with easy, medium, hard, expert. I never understood using the words normal or regular either. Because if it's normal, then you would think normal or regular is their intended difficulty. It's easier than advanced, but harder than rookie, so shouldn't it just be called medium? Uh, just saying. <sighs> Okay, so the notes and the strike line. The notes and the strike line. I think these look very strange. They they just do. So what do I mean? The notes, they're large. Look how big they are. Like when you see them moving in a video, they're freaking huge, man. Oh, no. <sighs> Fuck this intro, dude. These better be skippable. A better be skippable. So some people might think they don't look that big. I think they look gigantic. Personal opinion, I think they look huge. Especially when you have them clumped up like this. Cluster, dude. There was nothing wrong with the circles or the rectangles of Rock Band because they didn't really overlap unless they were really that close together. These are giant picks being lifted off the highway. The notes in Guitar Hero have always been kind of like circles, but they've been like looked at by, at an angle. So they looked not like completely wide circles that would just fit the same space as this. It's hard to explain what I'm talking about, but the point is these things are huge compared to circles and rectangles. So, strike line. I can understand trying to make it obvious what note you're holding but making it pop up like that is just strange and distracting and another thing about the strike line is the effects when you hit the notes just look at it it looks really cheap it looks like there was very little effort put into it it's kind of like those it's like the complaint i had the very at the very start where it just doesn't look it, it just looks like a knockoff they just fly past it, they disappear, there's a little light, a little fire. In basically every guitar hero and rock band, there was something that just made it feel good to hit a note. In guitar hero, you had this little plunger or something that would come up, hit the note, and it light up and fire and disappear. And then it just doesn't look like it would flat out disappear, it would just get covered by the fire. The notes in rock band, they, they're little squares and rectangles that just explode, that's just cool, okay? This is boring, look at this. I just disappeared and there's a tiny little flame. Tiny. Whatever. I just, I don't like it. Maybe some people might, but I think it looks really cheap. So, another thing that I've seen, actually more like haven't seen, is the hammer-ons. There was a screenshot, I think on the Score Hero thread somewhere, that showed these hammer-ons. Supposedly, they have this little light underneath, and that's it. Let me see if I can find the image, but if there is just a little light underneath the notes, 
that is really actually a very, very bad thing. Because when you get into a fast section and you're, the notes are all crowding each other, you will not be able to tell what the fuck is going on. Are they all strums or are they all hammer-ons? You can't tell because all the bottoms of the notes are covered by each other, damn it! Whatever, I'm going to have to sift through these pages to find it, but you get what I mean, right? They're a little, it's a little light underneath the note. How are we going to tell which ones are hammer-ons when shit really starts hitting the fan, dude? Just explain it to me. Oh, and the crowd faces are beautiful. Just, that's how I feel right now. And Big Chief, dude. There, there it is. See? If this is what the hammer-ons look like, experienced players are fuck, dude. We're, we're screwed. Because as soon as stuff starts getting really fast, good luck. Strum everything, or hope you can freaking see. So they better change this, dude. <sighs> so, this this kind of begs me to, to begs the question. It makes me wonder. Will there be another gimmick, kind of like the slider notes? Because we see that there's no sliding strip, slide slide mechanic on the guitar itself. But will they make will they make the uh, the notes come back? The ones that um, you don't have to strum a, ch a chain again to get the uh, hammer on chain going, where you just keep writing and it will auto hit them for you. Is that coming back at all? Because that's what I'm not sure of. And you know, I actually don't mind if it's gone. Notes are fucking broken anyway. So. More things about notes. One thing I'm happy to see, I don't know if it's in this video or not, but open notes are back. And they're on guitar. Not just bass alone, but guitar. This makes me happy. This is one of the few things that they're showing about, about this game that I actually like. Hammer-ons, not hammer-ons, duh. Open notes are back. And I've always wanted open notes on guitar ever since I saw them on bass, but bass was always... It just wasn't my thing to play. So, see there they are. Open notes. Having those back on guitar, not back, but on guitar at all, I think that's great. That's one of the few things they're writing here that I like. <sighs> okay. Now we're getting some frustrating shit here. So, what's the next thing? Three frets. This is a biggie. This is huge. So, in my opinion, first thing off, let's get the minor shit out of the way, is that it, it again makes the game look like a knockoff, makes it look cheap. It's all those other knockoff games, they would often have three or four frets. That's not very challenging unless they just throw a wall of notes at you and hope you hit it. It. Whatever, it just further makes it look like a knockoff. I don't like it. And another thing about this is that there is kind of speculation here about why they went with three frets. One thing is that people are assuming, not assuming, they're speculating that it's to support the mobile thing that they're doing here. So when you go all the way to the bottom of this page, you'll see that they talk about mobile. And clearly a phone isn't ideal for five six frets horizontally so three frets fits it perfectly but are you is it really necessary to nerf the full controller the full retail game just to support mobile so i really hope mobile isn't the reason why they went with three frets it's it's just i don't understand the decision which brings me to this video i found here they talk about the whole three fret thing and let me just play and I'll talk about it. No, but that, I thought that was that was the first big change, right? Mm -hmm. Is that they were saying, you know what, we want, uh, we listened to feedback and a lot of people couldn't had an issue using their the pinky, pinky, yeah, right? And, and and you know, sliding on the struts was felt like a guitar, but they really want to make this feel um, a little bit more like you're playing chords. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the excuses here is that people are just bad. They just didn't like how they had to use the pinky. Didn't like how. Uh, haven't had any uh, shift positions, just excuse is that they're bad. That's flat out what it is. Brutally honest here. 
Sorry if you're if you're offended by it, but I'm all about being straight up, dude. So uh, this is this is why difficulties exist. I it's a it's a very strange decision. Not strange, it's stupid. The reason why there's five frets on the original is it gives you a reason to shift your hand up and feel like a guitar. And yet they're doing this to make it feel realistic to be like chords, but you're taking away from that by not doing sh po position shifting. That's contradicting. It's ironic. It's stupid. Three frets so that you don't have to use your pinky or shift your hand up? Come on, man. Uh, that's it's, it's beyond stupid. For me, the biggest thing about it is a lack of the of pinky use. You have to like actively try to use your pinky on three frets just to keep your pinky active. Whereas before, you didn't need to do that unless you were playing on medium or easier. Uh. So, we're not going to be using our pinky unless you really want to make it hard on yourself for no reason. And we're not going to be shifting positions. There won't be any more challenging hand movements. The most challenge we're going to get is chord shapes. And they're not even going to be that complicated. It's just taking chord shapes you already know how to do on the, the original controller, but just shifting your hand, your fingers, up or down vertically. It's really not that big of a deal. Take your controller, hold the first three buttons, or just hold green and yellow. Move your index to the top of the green button and your uh, ring finger to the bottom of the yellow button. You've now successfully done a chord that is on the first fret black and third fret white. Is it really that much different? It's just shifting the position of your finger vertically. It's not even that hard. Which pretty much leads me into the debate about chords between the two layouts of buttons. So it's more realistic to do chords on this new guitar design, arguably. Because you're dealing with two rows supposed to simulate different strings. However, at the same time, that still limits just how many chords you'll be doing when it comes to what's coming down at you on the highway, like this. So, in this game, if you there, there'll be like, what's an example? Like I just gave, white, no, black and white over here. That's like the same thing as a green, yellow. You got green, red, red, yellow, all three, whatever. But you don't have to do any sort of stretching over to the fourth fret or fifth if there was one. It's you're lacking chord diversity just to make it more realistic. You're not going to run into anything as hard as, say, a green-red-orange, or a green-blue-orange, or a green-yellow-orange. That challenge is taken out just to make it more realistic. And it's really not going to be that more challenging on this, because it's... It's three frets, man. It's not going to be hard. It's not going to be hard to even understand the difference between white and black either. It's just shifting your finger up or down. So you're you're pretty. They're pretty much nerfing the entire game here just by this design, and it's it's stupid. Actually, you know what? It's not even the design. It's just the fact that there's three frets, dude. That is the entire thing here. Three frets. So I find the two row concept very interesting. It adds like an, uh, a really cool challenge for experienced players. Like I've been playing the game since 2006, when it, whenever GH1 came out, 2005. And we're all very used to these five button guitars by now. Now if you were to add a whole row beneath that, that is pretty damn sick. It adds a whole nother layer of challenge, but when you reduce it to three frets, you're eliminating the challenge that could have been there. The only challenge you're presenting us is 
adjusting to white and black. That's pretty much it. Because when you limit it to three frets, it's it's not going to be that hard. You're pretty much you're you're going to be their strategy here is that it's going to be easier for new players but more difficult for experienced players. That what they're doing here with the guitar design is pretty much wrong on both of those counts. So you get a new player, you hand them the guitar, you tell them pick easy or medium, play a song, go. And they see three colors, they are lined up just like their guitar is, they can do it no probably no problem, whatever. Now when you hand them this, they will see three frets just like on easy, but it's they're dealing with three extra buttons. They're, they have to deal with a second row. They are going to get lost and confused and they're going to be wondering why the hell am I missing all the time. It's you're you're presenting a barrier to these new players. Now when you get to the experienced players, like I was just talking about before, the challenge is going to be very limited. Unless you really throw a fucking wall of notes at us, it's really not going to be that much more challenging at all compared to what we're used to. This, I'm pretty sure this will be freaking ball lazy unless they just throw some more Dragon Force at us. But for new players, this defeats the purpose. They're, they're throwing more buttons at them that they know how to handle. If someone is going to struggle on easy or medium, how the fuck are they going to get anywhere with this with two rows? The only way I can see this working out is if you make them deal with black first and then like some songs will sneak like a white or two at you but you can't give them all th all six buttons off the bat it's i'm really curious how they're going to have to how they're going to work out the difficulty here because this concept just defeats the purpose of drag of dragging in of bringing in new players they're going to get frustrated just as experienced players like me are going to get frustrated at the lack of challenge. So, uh, it's the whole thing is just down to three frets and two rows, man. Three frets limits the challenge, two rows gives too big of a barrier. So that's, that's pretty much most of the gameplay things here. So, the next things I've seen is stuff about the controller. There's not much to really say about it. It's just Guitar Hero 5 controller, but black and your button design here that pisses me off. And then you got these two buttons. One of them is said to be the GHTV button. God, this thing is lagging the hell out of my browser. I blame the crowd background. But one is the GHTV background. I'm assuming that's this. Then we got this button here. What does this do? I'm curious to see what that does, so I'm not going to criticize it until they actually tell us what it does. Maybe it switches the hero powers. Maybe it's, uh, it looks like it has two arrows on it, so maybe it's like an auto restart. Thank god, I would love that. But whatever, we'll see. So, one other thing about the controller. And this is just hilarious. God, I wish it would stop lagging and scroll. I'm going to have to add block the background. So they explain a little bit here about each part of the controller. One thing that really screams at me is this. Classic strum bar. Why mess with perfection? Why mess with perfection, Activision? Why miss, miss, mess with perfection? Why would you screw with what works? Why six frets like this? We liked the idea of six frets. We didn't like the idea of three by two. We wanted six by one. <sighs> just fuck, dude. This is just stupid. Why mess with perfection? Why mess with perfection indeed? <sighs> Whatever. Okay. GHTV. That is something that was shown a little bit, but I really don't have much knowledge on it. Probably have to look into an article or something, but the site really doesn't tell me much. I really haven't looked into it, but it's a 
video service? Something subscription based is what I heard. Might not even be true, but holy fuck, this page is lagging the shit out of my browser. Move. Ah, whatever. Where is it? Let me just close this out. Maybe that'll help. Okay. The world's first playable music video network. So, I'm just trying to understand what this is. So, so whoever's watching this who has some more resources that tell me what this is, please show me because I don't know much about this. You and your controller are the star. Okay, hundreds of videos available on launch. Okay, so if there's going to be that many videos, I'm assuming it's literally just videos and you play on top of them. Because are they really going to have hundreds of songs playable on launch? <laughs> what? I really don't understand what's going on here, so I would need some clarification before I can really get an opinion on this. I don't know if it's going to be subscription-based or not, but we'll see, dude. We'll see. <sighs> Alright, so sorry for dragging this out, but we're near the end here. So the music. The music, the music... The music, the most important thing in a rhythm game. God, where'd they put the music selection in this page? Cool, here it is. I didn't have to scroll very far. So, of the songs revealed to us so far, it's all down to taste. But I, <laughs> I really don't like any of it. And it pretty much seems like they're going down the route where they did, I think, in Guitar Hero 5 or World Tour, was it? where they're mainly appealing to the mainstream crowd. I think Rock Band 3 suffered from this, from what I heard, but... Uh, I really hope that the mainstream crowd does not take up the majority, or the entirety, God forbid, of the set list. So... We'll see what the rest of the set list is, man. But, one big, big problem I have here. Skrillex. Fucking Skrillex! Dubstep in a Guitar Hero game? Are you fucking kidding me? Just... Please explain this to me. How does Skrillex fit into a Guitar Hero game? The only thing I can think of is if he happens to have a song with guitar in it. I don't listen to his songs. I don't know which songs might have guitars in it, but... Are you... <sighs> Dude. Either he worked with someone who is guitar focused and just added his shit in there, but dubstep just does not belong in Guitar Hero. It just doesn't. Guitar Hero is a very is it's guitar. It's supposed to be guitar centered. When you add shit like some of the stuff shown here and fucking dubstep, how is it it doesn't make sense, man. It doesn't. This game should be using music that focuses on guitar. Just, uh, it just baffles, it's baffling. I don't understand. So, the, the music is really going to matter here. I am not going to play this game if the music is garbage. Pure and simple. I don't care how fun the gameplay is. If I'm not going to enjoy the music, why the fuck would I play a rhythm game if the music is just against all of my tastes? There's just no reason for me to play it. So, really, the, the set list better be good, dude. Or else I'm not even going to touch this game. I don't care. Just the music, dude. It needs to be good. Please be good. Show me some good stuff later. Please. <sighs> well, that's pretty much most of it here. That's a lot of my thoughts on this game. It's not looking pretty. I really have zero hope for this game. It had some interesting concepts that were pretty much just defeated by strange design decisions. So, graphically, it's cheap. It looks like a knockoff. It's just disappointing. It cuts out custom characters, instruments, stages, the silly cartoons and shit, just to make it realistic. And, by extension, 
it's see, it, with with the lack of effort that's going to be put into the game visually, graphically, and even some of the features being removed over the change in graphics, it's it's like it shouldn't even be worth a full sixty dollar price. Just you're taking away several features just to make things very simple with this whole first person music video thing. Just uh, the base game by itself without a controller, it I. It does not deserve to be sixty dollars in my sixty dollars in my opinion. Just it doesn't. I'm sorry. You're taking away a lot of things visually that would add a lot of just things to enjoy about the game. Period. Graphics do matter, dude. Whether anyone watching this disagrees with me or not, you can't say that graphics don't matter. They do matter to a degree. When they matter, when they when they change the graphics to a point like this, where there's not going to be really cool stages like shit you'd see in Metalocalypse when there's not going to be custom characters or instruments you're just going to be seeing real people you uh, there's just uh, it's just not worth the $60 dude the features otherwise and the song list and how many songs are the only things that can really make it worth the money uh, so the gameplay choices are just strange. The core gameplay is altered. The controller is... Uh, I just don't agree with the buttons. And it pretty much just misses the entire point of why this game, why this series, appealed to a huge amount of people. The controller, particularly the buttons like I was going over earlier, a new player can get in really easily because it's just five buttons, not six in this two by three configuration. And they pick something easy and they don't have to deal with blue and orange. There you go. People can just jump in, pick something on easy or a hell even beginner as of World Tour and onward, and just jam. With this game, they're throwing more shit at a new player that's just going to make them uh, just not want to play it, dude. This game had potential, but... Everything that we're being shown so far just looks like it's being done wrong, being done poorly. And if it's going to come out in fall, I really think it's just too late for them to just change everything. Because everything is what needs to be changed, man. I can understand going for first person realism, realism immersion, but it just isn't what Guitar Hero was known for. This game should have just came out by itself without the Guitar Hero name on it. If it's being published by Activision, Dude, uh, they got money. They can advertise the shit out of this. They can call it superior to Guitar Hero. Not call it that, but just say that it is. Just, you can't call this Guitar Hero if it's not even that similar anymore. And the thing is, being made published by Activision, these this is a company that is known for not liking change by constantly selling, developing what sells. Very little change. Evidence, Call of Duty. I don't even have to really say. You probably figured that out by yourself. So you might be wondering, not probably not wondering. You probably be telling me, but Guitar Hero World of uh, not World Tour Warriors of Rock didn't sell for shit, so they needed the change. Well, here's the thing: they pushed out so many games in one year that it pretty much killed off the series because of oversaturation. It made people less interested. If there was a Call of Duty every four to six months, you bet people would drop Call of Duty like a rock. But since it's still selling, it's it's doing something right. It's not changing. Guitar Hero was doing fine by not changing, but they killed it off by releasing so many games. It was oversaturated. It They killed it by just doing that. And they had the nerve to blame the DJ Hero. Ah, <sighs> fucking kidding me. Whatever. And this is how they bring it back. I, I'm just not happy, man. A lot of us are not happy. This is how we all feel, man. Let's just hope that the game ends up turning out good. Otherwise, this game is making me excited for Rock Band. And I've never been a Rock Band guy. I liked it. I just wasn't into it. But, dude, they're turning me into a Rock Band player over this. So, this game better be good. It better be fucking good or else I'm going to be pretty angry. Ugh. <sighs>